Let me just send there. All right. Send the text. Yeah, see if I get a response. And if I don't, what we'll do is um, we'll go through the pro forma stuff. And uh, so that uh, I'll just hold it for him for another minute. Unlike my child, who I expect to respond to my texts immediately. That's right. With the same alacrity that she expects me to respond to hers. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. I am all about congratulating you the other night for jumping out of the bed in the middle. Ooh. Good kid. Uh, Good kid. Uh, all right. Um, let's rock and roll here. Um, all right. It is 6.08 p.m. Good evening. It's a, a meeting of the University Glam Homeowners Advisory Council. Um, I'm Mary Kennedy. I'm the chair pro tem. A couple of small orders of business. Um, beginning in September, we will have a new schedule and we're going to move the meeting up from the, it's the third Thursday to the second Thursday. Um, in order to make sure that we can have a full complement of the HAC here at meetings. So um, it'll be as currently scheduled in August, but September will move up. We'll stay on that schedule at least through the school year and then make a determination how to go on. Okay, um, the approval of the minutes, I think Mr. Wheeler had possibly some questions about the minutes, so I will hold that. And can we go to the public safety report? Officer Sanchez. Um, great you in the view. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How's that? Okay. I'm Officer Lindsay Sanchez with the Cal State Channel and Space Department. From June 20th to now July 20th, there's only one incident of note to report on. Early this morning, we got a report of three mountain lions on Channel Islands near Anacapa. Uh, it was late reported, therefore we were unable to confirm the sighting. Uh, it's unusual to see three mountain lions. They tend to be uh, solo creatures, but this time uh, the individual we saw three mountain lions all together in a pack. Um, and that was on Channel Islands by Anacapa on the mountainous side. Mm. She had babies. Maybe. <laughs> they said they were all the same size, so oh. I'm sure. About the size of a golden retriever. Each of them. When you say morning, was that already daylight? No. It, they are uh, nocturnal creatures, so it was about 5.30 in the morning. We didn't receive the report until past 7. Okay. So... Interesting. That is all we have to go over. Um, if there are numerous mountain lion sightings or any mountain lion sightings, uh, we just urge the individuals who see them to contact the police department as soon as they can so we can confirm the sighting and we can update Mission Game. And, and that's it. Well, thank you very much. No problem. I don't know if anyone has any questions. No, not this time. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys have a good day. Have a bye. All right. Yeah. Can you call the roll? Oh, I'm sorry. You are correct. I neglected and failed to call the roll. Um, let's see. Ms. Bulger 
uh, has indicated to us that she would not be here this evening. Okay, Mr. Morris. Okay. Uh, okay. And Mr. Wheeler is not here yet. I, I did just text him and it says message failed to send. I hate when that happens. Let's try one more time. Um, okay, let's see if it will reset. Anyway, uh, while I'm playing with my phone, Mr. Lazarus, would you like to uh, give your site authority report? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Um, what's wrong? Nice to meet you. I'm John Lazarus. Nice to meet we you. We just changed emails, but I don't think we met. No, I'll be a mystery until our next meeting. Yeah, you're <laughs> weathering this well. Um, so just wanted to welcome the new members of the site of for working with you to make what I find to be a really amazing community uh, even better. Um, I'm looking forward to having the AGC appoint its two members of the bag, and I think there's plenty of work to do, and I look forward to engaging in that. Just for clarity, I'm not a member of the BAG. I serve as site authority staff on the BAG, but I'm not one of the five members of it. Um, and really just sort of meeting now to provide as much clarity and understanding of how the budget works and sort of like what's you know up for discussion and what's kind of off the table. Um, I'd be happy to... Um, if, if anybody has any questions about sort of how's the budget structured, laid out, or anything like that, I, I, I think I know a fair amount about it. I'd be happy to answer any questions, whether that's a session where we all kind of sit around on a table with a bunch of spreadsheets and kind of uh, dig into it. Um, and I do see some opportunities to control costs the, you know, the, for the year that just started. And so if anybody wants any ideas, I'm happy to share the ones I've got. Um, the bad charter was discussed at the last CAG meeting, the Community Advisory Group meeting. And, and there's just some sloppy stuff in there. It's basically terminology. So it talks about budget advisory committee, it's budget advisory group. And so there was a, a, a desire expressed by members of the CAG to clean it up. Jake generously offered his time. He created a cleaned up version and that was shared with the HAC last night. Once we get input from you all, I'd hope that we could get it in the next week. Does that seem pretty reasonable? No, um, then it'll, it's also going to go over to um, the CAG, get their input. They meet a week from today, and then it'll go up to the bag. They can vote on the cleaned up version, and we'll have a cleaned up version that we can then share out with the community. And then an Anacapa Canyon construction update. So the grand opening for the model homes is scheduled for August 12th. That's a... Uh, Three weeks from this Saturday, I think. Wow. Two weeks from this Saturday. And I toured the model homes on Tuesday. They are really nice. Um, and the timeline for construction really is basically unchanged since the last time. So it's the 170 senior apartments. Um, they're expecting that to be occupied around February or March of 2024, so early next year. The 310 market rate apartments are going to take a while, but they're roughly... Um, the beginning of 2024 until, say, fall of 2024 to get those occupied. And then the, the houses are being built in sort of batches, basically. And each batch consists of a couple single family and a couple townhomes. The first one are going to, uh, they're starting to accept offers. There's a soft opening that I think is really just like their team and sort of like the people at the end of it on August 5th. But they're going to start accepting offers in August on that first batch of homes. And then they'll continue to sell those um, likely through the fall of 2024, again, releasing them in batches. And when you say offers, does that audience come from, did, did those people have to email to be part of the waiting list or does that open up to everybody? It, it's opened up to everybody. There is a marketing list that, uh, that the people who are developed that, developing the single family, um, and they use the term single family attached and detached as opposed to single family and townhouse okay. like University of Glen, but both of those types, townhouses and single family homes, anybody can make an offer. Um, the priority system does exist in Anacapa Canyon, but only for like offers. Okay. So let's say a house is $800,000 and, and I'm a category two and I offer 775 and you're a category six and you offer 800, they're going to sell it to you. Um, and, and so it's... Sorry, 
Um, you were about to ask something. I go ahead. And I was going to ask uh, how will the how will the general public know that these are now open for offers? They're marketing. The, uh, I mean, they're in the business of selling houses. Okay. It's, it's already offered. Yeah, and so if 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 you haven't, if you're interested in getting any of the marketing material. on either our website or their website and there's a link that will get you onto their marketing okay, email perfect. list and then they're you know they're they're going to want as much interest as possible let's say the market works yep. um and hold on a second i actually have the prices but i thought i had it in here can you bear with me one second let me just find it all right all right we got Okay, here we go. Um, so this is the first batch of townhouses and single family houses, and this is only nine units, but high level townhouses are gonna go for about 600 to 680,000 and single families from 770 to $850,000. Um, and that's the end of my report. I'll answer any questions anybody's got. How much are the HOA fees going to be for those guys? I don't know. And they're going to have a separate HOA fee. They're calculating that now. Um, and, and it's going to work a, a little bit differently from my perspective. Because all we're, the only cost we're imposing on them directly is the cost of maintaining the roads, sidewalks, um, curbs, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And and they're going to pay the same water fee that everybody in New Glen pays. But um, they will be determining their own HOA fee, depending on you know, how long do they want to heat the pools and you know what kind of property management company do they want to engage with. So I'm not sure, but I know that they will have that finalized by the 12th because- What amenities are they allowed to use that we, that we use also? There's a joint use agreement across the two communities. And this is important to know. So anybody who lives in University Glen can go up there and use anything you want. Use their gym, use their pool. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's vice versa. Vice versa. Okay. So anybody from there can come here. Anybody from here can come there. It, everybody has access to everybody's stuff. But their HOA is going to be based on just their pool, just Correct. their usage. Correct. I see. I mean, it, they got a nice pool. I I suspect there might be traffic going that way. From well, I guess it also depends on you know if the pool is in your backyard. Right. I'm right. sure. Yeah. Go to the closest one. <laughs> cool. All right. Good to know. Will Will we be knowing how much they their HOA is once it's out? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're, you can't sell a house without telling people what the initial HOA is. So they are going to need to define that number by August 12th when they put those houses on the market. Okay. So we'll know pretty soon. Yeah. Anybody who anybody, anybody buys the house is going to get a disclosure, much like when you bought your house here, it said... You know, the HOA four years ago was this. They're going to have that. Whether what that is in the future, I don't think any HOA kind of guarantees it, or maybe they do. It's not my business, really. Right. Um, but the HOA fee will be uh, determined by themselves. Okay. Thank you. And will the rest, this house, the University of Glen, will we be notified once that HOA has been determined? Uh, I mean, I can share with the community for sure. I can share with the HAC okay. once I know it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a secret at all. They, they, when they put the homes in the market, they're going to put the HOA fee along with it. I'm sorry, you're right. It's not an HOA. And does everybody know why it's not an HOA? I've heard it. Because it's state. It's really. It's, it's as simple. As, no, it really comes down to it's it's state. What they term, what they term it, I'm not sure what they're going to term it. It is. I, I sh thank you for correcting me. It's not an HOA fee because this is state land, and there's no state laws that govern an HOA. Right. So more complicated than that, but at a high level, that's the reason right. we call it a CAM fee. So I should not have used the term. Yeah, you, for our rents, at least, it's called maintenance. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's and nobody calls it CAM for common area maintenance, which is the things that. Are commonly maintained or operated, right? And theirs will be called CAM as well. That's, that's I don't know. That's still up in the air. I don't. I don't think I. It will not be an H. It will not be an HOA. Whether they call it a maintenance rent or a ground rent or a common area maintenance fee or I don't. I don't have a, an opinion about that myself. 
What's that? And their there's there's uh it's it's a their their contract is six hundred pages long, so right. it's a good bit heftier. Um, you know, yours is whatever it is, forty or something. But there will be an individual ground sublease for each townhome, single family home in the site authority. And that's still being tweaked right now. Um, but at a high level, it will dictate that, um, um, you know, who's responsible for what the same way that the University of Glen uh, ground sublease dictates. And, and how will they handle, will they have their own committees, their own bags and cags? Will they have that or is that, how, how would those two, if we're gonna share all these amenities, how does that happen? If they have their own HAC in a sense or whatever they call it, yeah. how do those two? I mean, I think that they're gonna have their own. I don't know whether, I don't know what, if they're gonna have all three that are in here, mm -hmm. um, but they'll have their own self-governance the same way U Glen has its own self-governance. And I guess I, I, I don't think you're gonna be telling them how to spend their money and I don't think they're gonna be telling you how to spend your money. Right. But if we, I mean, so we couldn't make any decisions on their area and they wouldn't be able to make any decision for ours, right. but we're still allowed. Yeah, they couldn't say the school's not hot enough and turn it up. We, and we couldn't do it to theirs. Correct. Okay. Out of Interesting. curiosity, and this, some of this may just be stuff that has been discussed previously, but because I'm new, yeah. it would be a little longer. If, if all the amenities are, everybody has the ability to share across the board, why wouldn't it be one HOC for the whole community? Because I think that they can, each community can decide how it wants to heat its pools and when to replace the curtains in the clubhouse, when to paint the fence around the, the playground for themselves. And um, I don't know why the community would necessarily, would you want them telling you to heat your pool more? I don't well, personally, I don't think it really, my, my opinion makes no difference, but I'm just curious as this, I mean, if there's an imaginary line between the neighborhood, why would one be separate from what all the neighborhood is? Their decisions kind of, their decisions may dictate their cam fees to go up. So any decisions that they make could potentially affect the fees that they pay. Again, yeah, they're going right? to cover their own versus cost. any decisions they make won't be able to affect ours and Correct. vice versa. And, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 if, if it, are you are you suggesting that, that there there should be some common common governance? I'm just curious why it was. I think there should be a secondary and a split in that area. Yeah, I just think that they're. I think that they're they're complementary communities for sure. And I think they're going to be good neighbors to one another, but I think that they're they're different. You know, I mean, you look at you know maximum resale price is a thing here; it's not there. Um, senior apartments is a thing there; it's not here. So I think they're going to be good neighbors, but I think that they're going to kind of take care of their own thing the same way you make decisions about your house and it's separate from him. Okay. But that doesn't mean you're not a good neighbor to one another. All right. Mr. Lazarus, do you have anything else? No, unless there's other questions. No. Okay. Did you? Okay. Thanks, John. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry. Do I hear a motion to accept the report? Uh, yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, sir. Nice to meet you. Appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Friesen. Oh, good evening, John. Thank you. See me, is this good? Okay. okay. So, um, welcome all, all of the new members. Good to have you and look forward to working with you. Disappointed the other members aren't here, but we'll move ahead. So, a couple of it to start with. Um, just kind of my report, I've, I'm trying to keep it to the 10 minutes, so I'm taking the high points, but I have some specific things I want to bring to your attention. Um, one is on um, Tuesday, July 11th, SoCal Gas installed a concrete pole on the north side of Channel Island's vehicular bridge 
on which um, SoCal Gas has installed a repeater equipment station, which assists in transmitting meter information from the community to SoCal Gas. So, and if you look at it, there's also a body station right at the base of it as well. And so this is something that's been in the, in the um, offing for, I think, probably two years. And so I wanted to bring that to people's attention. And this is basically so that um, they can beat the meter and Anacapa Canyon. And so that is, if somebody asks you, what's that, you know, what are they monitoring up there? That you can say that's SoCal gas, because it isn't, there isn't anything on it that I could see that said SoCal gas isn't identified. Okay, next let's go to landscaping, which is a big piece of what we do in our office. I wanna thank all the owners who have sent pictures of irrigation issues seen at night to, when they're walking their dogs. Um, very, very much appreciated because um, these are geysers or gurgling along the curbs that um, you may or may not see because in the morning it uh, dries out. So I want to acknowledge members of the community who have done that and encourage other members to do the same if they see something like that. Pictures are good so that we can identify rather than just saying something on Twin Harbor. It's kind of, it's helpful, but um, to have a picture is helpful. Is more helpful. Um, next item, um, Gothic landscaping continues. Get that. Um, Gothic landscaping continues um, work on the DG path repairs, um, and the base layer of the DG path continues to be placed along the Channel Islands Drive. Um, DG paths that need repairs between Rincon and Anacapa Drive basically between here and all the way over to the park. The finished layer of DG will be um, compacted um, um, soon. The repairs to the DG path leading to the basketball court has been two layers and it has been tamped. And in that case, there's also um, the bat board um, borders have been added as well. So you can, can see that that was very nice. And um, this work, in the area is anticipated to be completed by the end of July. And then at that point, the last place that they have to do to complete is um, from the 3000 block of Channel Islands, which is the last round about going, going north on Channel Islands Drive between um, that roundabout and um, Camarillo Street. There on the south side of the street below the water towers, there's a part that is um, compromised. And so they'll finish that and then we'll be done with that um, repair work. And all of, for your information, all of that is being paid out of the 2022-2023 um, Common Area Reserve Fund. Next, um, in response to the community's concern of Gothic landscape using leaf blowers in UG and specifically to remove debris from the street gutters. The following plan has been developed to have temporary no parking on streets in University Glen on a four week rotation. This will allow Gothic to use their walk behind back to pick up leaves and debris in the gutters. The, over, uh, the overall graphic plan for no parking let me get this. I have this. You can look at this. Want your opinion? So you see this. It's Okay. And so, so what we're what we're looking at doing is that um, you can look at the overall plan that shows um, the Gothic bows on Mondays and Tuesdays. And so, on Mondays, it shows on week one, week two, week three, week four. Um, on the south side of, of the property, um, it's phase 1A and B. 
um, long channel on, uh, along um, Anacapa Canyon and Landing Cove and Smugglers primarily, that um, these will alternate um, in a four week cycle. And then on Tuesdays, um, you can see the first one is along Kyler and part of Channel Islands and part of um, Santa Cruz Island Drive. And that goes over for four weeks as well. And so what, what we tried to do here was to provide for people to have a place to park that is not on the street. And so we, the entire area isn't inconvenienced, you know. And the other thing that we're also doing is that Gothic will take the, the, the second two plans that are more specific of saying when there's no parking and they, they are going to put those in the areas 72, 48 to 72 hours before, basically on the weekend before, like on Friday, so that over the weekend you can see if you need to move your car on Monday and Tuesday. This is so that when they do their mowing, they can blow all the grass into the street and they can get it all picked up, and particularly on those streets that have, have a lot of debris, uh, sycamore trees, that kind of thing, that they can really clean it up. So it doesn't, because it, the complaint is that it, it, it's blowing a lot of dust around cars. To date, there have not been complaint, only actually one complaint about potential damage, which was not damage to a car. So we aren't worried about damage, but people feel they want the, op we would like to give them the opportunity to move their car to avoid the blowers. And so Dothic also has commented that using the vacuums is really much more efficient and it really does it much better. So that is, that is why we're implementing this. I would invite all of the members of the HAC to kind of review it, talk, talk to my, amongst your friends. Um, we would really like to um, start this and we realize it's kind of a progression. We will put it out to the community and then we'll post. And then at that point, you and I know that we'll get lots of questions. What are these signs? What's going on? And then at that point, we'll answer the questions and move ahead and see, see if this is helpful. Um, we, we hope it is. And at the same time, we're trying to be responsive to the community's concern. We also acknowledge that when it's fall comes, when there are lots of leaves, that this um, cycling may be mod modified to address leaves, particularly in those streets that have sickness. So that this is this is our first uh, first pass at it. So I'd appreciate I'll, I'll get in contact and send an email. Um, in a week or so to the HAC members and say, have you heard anything back? Is there a blind spot that we haven't been thinking of? Because we've worked with, with Land, uh, Gothic for, for almost a month on this after um, several members of the community brought up the concern. So, okay. So think about that. That's, that's that piece. It's the next item. Um, there to give a rundown on the work orders that were um, put this this month. Um, there were four, 40 work orders. Of those work orders, 28 were um, having to do with landscaping. Of those 28, 23 have been completed, and the remainder are in progress. Pest control seven. That has to do with. Um, quest for spraying for spiders, whether they're rodents, whether they're mice, um, squirrels, um, nesting on the roofs, that kind of thing. That they, we've had seven um, since our last meeting, and of those, six have been completed and one is in progress. We have had three in regard to townhomes, as, as all of our townhome owners, you probably, oh no, you're not. Um, townhome owners, the windows are. Um, and repairs of the windows are a maintenance site that is, is covered under the townhouse reserves. And so this last month, we had three window requests, which can be screens, it can be windows not opening, closing, any of the above, um, screen um, the patio doors and patio door screens, any of those kind of items. And of those, um, we've had three this, this month, and all of those are in progress. So that totals up basically to 40, 40 um, work orders that we have um, 
put put in and dealt with. Should patio doors have a screen? The, the sliding patio yeah. doors generally have screens so that you can open them, you know, and the bucket. Yes, yes. As opposed to French doors, the yeah. French doors, we have to put it on ourselves. I was thinking, am I missing out on something? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how much they charge us for one screen for a window or a door? Um, because we have them, it, it varies. Sure. But basically, the, the vendor, the preferred vendor that we use is quality windows. They were the original builders. So they have um, Milgard. Milgard is the type of window representative for Milgard. So that's kind of who we go with. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are today. But as far as what they charge, we don't know. It, it, it varies depending on what it is. Basically, a service call, you know, a service call is about, I think it's $100 to come out. And then various screens, it depends on whether they need to take them back, whether they can do them you know, right there. The reason I said we had to replace ours this weekend. Oh, the screens. Yeah. And I, it took me about 30 minutes and less than $20. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. Well, and they are, <laughs> it's their charging because I can't. Yeah. Well, I feel like do it cheaper. Yeah. Mr. Morris will be taking work orders. Yeah. yeah. We'll take, yeah. Uh, they're going to take over their business. <laughs> Full service happens. That's right. right. $30. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. It's basically a site visit. Yeah, service call. Okay. okay. Um, the next thing I'd like to bring up, and I, I believe you folks, I, I emailed you this. So, but I will give you this. Oh, you got it. Very good. <laughs> I do, I have it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. okay. Um, the next item is regarding single family home paint colors. And we worked together with um, CSUCI um, facility services and decided to, to get approval on the process for moving forward and had to um, secure the paint colors and communicate that to um, to the CAM manager so that uh, who, who is keeping track of that kind of thing. So it's all on the spreadsheet. So um, the process which we will be putting on the website is when a single family homeowner wishes to paint their house, they shall select one color from each of the three categories in parentheses as listed on the University Glen single family home colors sheet and submit a property improvement application to the homeowner advisory council for re review and approval. Approval from the HAC using colors from the approved color palette dated July 14th, 2023, will give notice to the site authority for their records of the color scheme for the specific single family home. Note, the body colors selected will be painted on the retained retaining walls of the corresponding single family home. And in parentheses, an owner may offer alternative colors from each of the three categories listed for review by the HAC members if they choose. This is intended to answer questions whether I can paint my, my house the same color that it was originally. And that, that would be that they would put in a property improvement application, the paint colors, and it would be reviewed by the HAC members who per the ground subleys are responsible for the, to maintain the aesthetics in the community. So you would make that determination and make a recommendation to the site authority who would have the final say. Okay. May I sum that one up? Sure. So if you're picking one from column A, one from column B, one from column C, the uh, task of the HAC is to say, yes, that's what it is and send it on through. If you are picking something other than that, then the HAC is supposed to be uh, use its best discretion. Make a recommendation. Okay. Make a recommendation. Yes. Okay. You will notice that um, people who, single family homeowners who are familiar with the palette will notice that a fifth um, stucco color was added, which is of a lighter color. Um, and they will also notice that under the um, front doors and shutter colors, um, a green black was added. So now there are five color, 
there were five colors. One of the greens was removed and a black option was, out, was offered. Okay. Next item. Um, this has to do with the finances. So, sure. Um, do, do most uh, homeowners um, request a paint thing because they're damaged or just because they don't like the palette? No, the, really it comes, it comes down to there, there, there has been conversation in the past of um, maintenance of the stucco and the colors on the single family homes. Um, neither of you would remember, you might remember that, that um, back about five, six years ago, we painted the townhomes and that was selected. And the single family homeowners were saying, well, are we going to pay in our homes too? And, this, and the, um, the facility services at CSUCI came up with these additional colors. And up to now, it was kind of, what do you want to do? And now, because we're also looking at a protocol to um, keep track of the colors that are on the single family homes and also how to encourage people the single family homeowners to maintain the stucco paint colors on their homes and the shutters. So it's an aesthetic question. We're going on 20 years here, okay. you know, and usually the, the stucco paint, depending on whether you use the application um, method you use could be seven to 10 years if it's painted or it could be more for other applications, which, uh, which have been used in the past. And so it really comes down to it is making sure that all single family homeowners know that they're responsible to paint their homes. And that with that, this is how you determine, determine how to move forward. And some of that is based on the fact that, that about five years ago, the townhouse paint colors were updated okay. from the original design to these. Okay, thank you. Make sense? Okay. How are we doing for time? How are we doing time? We're okay. Over I'm over. A little bit finance. Quick, quick. Finance. Uh, Start quick. <laughs> quick. Okay. Um, everybody knows what their CAM fees are as of July 1st. Um, single family homeowners, $313.86. Town home owners, $484.76. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up is the site authority has agreed that UGCAM can post an abbreviated monthly operating report to the UG website shortly after um, KWP, that's us, um, submits monthly operating report to the site authority. Their abbreviated nature of this report maintains the privacy of individual owners and vendors information and working, living and working information in um, University Glen. If anyone would like additional detailed supporting information about the abbreviated report, they are welcome to um, review a hard copy of the complete um, monthly operating report in the UGCAM office by making an appointment. The difference we're talking about is eight to 10 pages for the abbreviated report as opposed to 80 to 90 pages for the complete statement. Um, basically, I can mention where we are as far as June was the, I'll do this very shortly. June was the, the um, close of the fiscal year for 22-23. And so the report um, that we put together for as of June 30th kind of gives an idea of what the reconciliation may look like very close. And overall, there is a um, negative variance for the entire budget of $2,844.52 based on the actual budget, which was, was um, this is without reserves, of $1,986,335.50 um, it's less than a percent um, difference. And so from that standpoint, it, it, is, it is right on target. Be aware that there are a couple of items. One is that the water, we have a negative variance of almost $33,000 for the whole community. And that for the sewer, we have a negative variance of, of $38,000 for the entire community. So those will be absorbed in their 
when we determine when we determine what the actual distribution at the end of end of the year is. That includes the apartments, townhouses, town center, and um, retail here in the town center. And then it also includes the single families and townhomes. Be aware that with the townhomes, the townhomes have two insurances that we're running a negative variance of about $10,000 a piece for, and that will be only absorbed by the townhouse owners. And so this, this $2,844.52 is for the entire community, and we will, we will be able to provide additional information um, and as it, as it um, becomes more clear, and we'll talk about it at the budget advisory group um, as well, be aware that the final um, determination will be made public by um, the end of the first year, which is September 30th, 2023. And so um, just to give you an update on that, okay? The other thing I wanted to bring up briefly was that the, the reserves um, this year or this, this month, um, there appears to be about a 1.5% 1, 1 increase over last last month, and that includes um, about eight thousand dollars of um, funds used for townhouse repairs. So the there at the present time there is in the reserves total is three million six hundred seventy one thousand three hundred thirty two dollars and sixty eight cents. So make sure that's it. Just passing, we're continuing to work on the uh, basketball court conversation, looking at adding basketball goals to the to the um, project. And number two is we're also continuing to talk about the sa the um, safety day, and we'll be looking at um, talking about the evacuation plan for the community. Probably working at either next next HAC meeting or the next. Okay, great. Qu questions. Okay. When you said absorbed um, earlier about mm -hmm. the funds, well, absorbed where exactly? Well, the situation is that there are there are five categories, and depending on depending on their responsibility for payment, for instance, with the with the with the townhomes, mm -hmm. there are um, well most of that goes with the um, the reserves, but there are items that are like the insurance that is only paid for by the townhomes. And so it's like, this is a, a composite number. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when you divide it out and say, this, this is your responsibility, this is your responsibility. If for instance, last year when we did this, that the single family homes um, got, got a check for 53,000 or $53 a piece was credited their account and the um, townhomes paid around $93 back. A check was required to balance the books at the end of the year. Copy that. Gotcha. Um, and, and that was this last year was the first year that that was implemented, which was, which is per the ground sublease. So we're looking at it, doing that again. Gotcha. Okay. Appreciate it. The other thing I would also say is, is many times, as we're doing the reconciliation, other bills may come in or charges that we presently are not in in the um, in the reconciliation, and that that is why I'm cautioning. So, okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, your motion to approve Mr. Friedman's report. Accept. To accept. I'm sorry. To accept Mr. Friedman's report. Um, yeah. yeah. So moved. Yeah. Second. All right. Uh, there being no objections. Thank you. Until next month. Your part is accepted. Thank you. Um, because we are, because we understand we're going to see the new bag, or the new bag charter is sitting in my email inbox. Okay. Um, and I have not read it yet. And, and because we are down two members, I think, um, Unless either of you have an objection, I'd like to defer that discussion until I know that everybody's read it. And, and with deferring that discussion, we'll defer selection of 
bag members for the coming year. But we will make an, every effort to have them by next week, which was when John asked so that we could schedule an upcoming bag. All right. Um, all right. Next up on the agenda is the proposed code of conduct for HAC members. Um, and out with the agenda. I think everybody's had a copy. This is, I've tried to go back and make all of, to address all of the comments I got from anybody. Um, and they're mostly in there. And one um, perceptive reader, you know, the proofreading is always most, except um, most effective post publication. Um, one perceptive reader sent today three um, edits um, on page one, definition HAC. Somehow I missed the word council. Okay. Um, page two, HAC duties and standards of care. Um, the last item, gathering information, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, Put groups, plural, should be singular. Right. And um, uh, let's see, should this be two, three, four, five, the sixth page? Um, it's the second from the bottom line. I have a big word here and above and it's got an unnecessary space in it. Um, and then finally on the last page, um, in the paragraph with respect to meetings, um, the suggestion was made that the, um, in the, let's see, the third line says homeowner forum, that that be edited to say public comments rather than homeowner forum, because that's what we call the agenda. So I am accepting all of those comments. As you can see, we've gotten rid of the signature line um, and um, it is my request that, um, that they be approved this evening. Uh, I object until the other two are here. Both of those two objected the whole time. So I wouldn't feel comfortable approving that without them two here. Okay. So do I hear a motion to table? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just like the is there a second of that motion? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda number eight was Mr. Wheeler's proposal. And since he's not here, um, can we table that and likewise? Until that a full compliment, and that brings us to committees. Um, Ms. Strunk, anything from the social committee? Yes, three quick things. Um, the first item is that there is a hearing for anyone with anybody with people ones in the neighborhood. There's a Dodger camp set up it's coming July 31st, August 2nd. You can find more information about that by going to. CSUCI invite forward slash news. Um, several neighbors in the community are planning a garage sale for the last Saturday month of July. Um, if you would like to be included in the information going out about that, you can send an email to ugactivities at gmail.com. And the last item is that the Kent Library is setting up a wonderful um, story time for families and neighborhoods to bring their young ones out. And that's slated to begin in the fall. Um, it's kind of nothing has been formally set out yet. They're just kind of planning it right now. Great. Nice. I'm excited. Um, do we have a landscape committee report tonight? No, no report. Okay, and perhaps Mr. Wheeler will have one when next we see him. All right, Garden Committee, Ms. Phillips. Hey. Yeah, why don't you pull Come on out down. the chair? And... For old time's sake. Okay, <laughs> chair, chair, 
Make yourself to home. Um, the garden is doing quite well. We uh, had two um, plot people who had plots that weren't working the plot. So um, they decided to give up the plots because they didn't have time. So I've, I've assigned um, the plots to two additional people, which leave one person on the wait list. So I think that's good. I think the borders are looking good. So it's getting warm, everything's growing, so it's all good. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. You were not here, and, and you may want to share this with the gardeners for the uh, safety report. Um, safety report? Yeah, the public safety. But there was a spotting. What did you say it was? Last week. Last week. Three, um, mountain lions. three mountain lions. Was it this morning? Or was it this morning? Yeah, three down sort of in that general direction at the what time yeah 530 oh, okay yeah. oh okay you were going up this early garden watch yeah but i was out there at seven yeah but you may want to let the uh, the gardeners know that because they do tend sometimes to they've created their own hac in there <laughs> <laughs> all right okay yeah the the uh, line advisory committee um, okay, motion to uh, accept, Ms. Phillips. Second. Okay, all right, no objection. And um, I was told that there is no dog committee report, so we're done there. Uh, oh, on the dog committee, one, oh, thing, one yes. thing that I did see is the gate that separates uh, small breeds from the large breeds, um, right there at the gate. Um, either the small dogs or the large dogs they have dug out or you can tell they're trying to get to the other side and it's left enough gap to where some small dogs can get under that gate and potentially get into the large breed could be a liability it's not a big deal somebody had a large stick there mm -hmm. just to block it but i just wanted to point that out okay thank you yep. all right jake can you have well, Somebody okay. take a look at it. Super. Thank you. No All right. I um, um, turned in the community advisory group minutes. Uh, a couple of minor items of note. Um, one is that pickleball discussions are ongoing as to whether we can just obtain the use of the pickleball courts on campus and you know, put to rest the question of any future pickleball striping down there. And uh, um, I've, I've escalated the, the question. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, you all know that the, that at the last CAG that we, we discussed the problems with the bag charter. And so we're waiting on that. And there's um, nothing else terribly significant. Uh, I want to ask some then about that. Yeah. Um, we're not allowed to use, there's a big wall on campus, right? Right. And is that we're not allowed to use it? Is that what we're being told? In theory, yes, we're being told that. And I have escalated that, moved that up and said, seriously? <laughs> yeah. So I have seen people using them when students are there. Yeah. Lots of people use Yeah, I see them using but I've used it. They're not students. Yeah. So on the books, we're not allowed to sit. Right. 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 <laughs> right. And so we would rather get blessing because we don't want to be out there being bad examples of, of miscreant behavior. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm trying to get us that. But have they yeah. provided a reason why? Because interest. no is always the easiest first response okay. to a, a novel question. <laughs> That's my take on That's it. That's the mom answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go ask your father. Yeah. Insurance risk. Yeah. Liabilities. Yeah. So um, with that, okay, 
I don't think anybody signed up for public comment. So I do believe. Carolyn, did you? Uh, I did, but uh, I don't oh. that I have one. Okay. Uh, in which case? I did have a question on the following color. I have a question on the box. Oh, sure. Question on the list. Cool. In my public comment? Sure. Well, I don't they understand what the letters mean, or if they come in order, or if there's, there's no order. order. Well, why do they have letters? A, B, C, D. What do those mean? Why are they there? Actually, a reference it is the same colors. If you go look at the townhouses, those have those letters on them. So it's like if you look at you look at A on that, it's the same as A on the townhouse colors. There's not go by go by the Sherman Williams number. No, I meant these letters. A. Yeah, I understand that that the A. If you look at the townhouse colors, uh -huh. they all reference each other. There are lines that that say if you do this color, then it's A right. over here and B. Right. That isn't the way it is there. Okay. Basically, choosing any from any from line A or or one or the top line. Choose one from the top line, choose one from the middle line, choose one from the bottom line, okay. and single family homeowners. This is what you've done. And then the Greek bill is new, right? It's new. Oh, I'm going to have to change my colors. <laughs> Do you want your property improvement application next? <laughs> okay. But I did not really like the but I like the Greek bill. I want to back to change it to give it to you for time. <laughs> we can adjourn to go into executive session, which we will begin as soon as Ms. Phillips finishes updating her PIA. We are officially adjourning at 7.04.